Do you want to hear? I have some audio here. I was about to say, I, I want to hear Tony Khan attempt to weasel his Rick Moranis looking face. Oh, you out can't of say this. that. You can't say that. What? He doesn't look like Rick Moranis anymore. If you remember the early days of AEW, or if you ever see footage of or photos of him at one of the soccer matches, he has his glasses, he has a suit, thin tie, you know, very professional. He's now completely disheveled. He looks like a madman. He's dressed like a slob. He's not wearing his glasses. I don't know if it's because of the contact lenses or if he's just fucking high. But maybe, he, he, maybe he doesn't want to see this clearly. But he doesn't blink. Like he, so he just has wide eyes open as, and his hair is all over the place. He but now wait like a minute. Mess. Now wait a minute. A lot of people would take issue with you. They don't believe that Tony Khan went into this with his eyes wide open. How about with his wide eyes open? Maybe that. With his wallet open. How about that? With yeah, with wallet wide open. There you go. <laughs> Einar, Rocky, all of you. Uh, so with eyes and wallet wide open. So this video's out there. I don't. How do you weasel out of it? I don't know if all the quotes are there, so I'm going to try to pull up the quotes in case he doesn't cover it all. But again, here is a rather disheveled looking young Mr. Khan talking about AEW Revolution. I'm going to press play. Now, now can we play? We can play. It's a press conference. It's a press right? conference. For the press, we can play this. It was a conference for us. And we're reviewing it, so we are covered. Go. But uh, someone who sent it to me said that the answer is covered within the first couple of minutes. So let's play this. All right, Tony. Uh, great pay-per-view tonight. I was wondering if you could give us a status update on John Moxley and Kenny Omega, their condition after the match, how everything went. Both guys are great. Uh, you know, uh, honestly, I'm glad neither guy came out with a serious injury because it was a really scary oh, match, and they both really put their health at risk for a huge pay-per-view main event. Uh, I think it was it was awesome. It was a great spectacle, and I think we're all lucky uh, that the bomb – Going off at the end didn't really hurt anybody. That Kenny's big uh, master plan that he that he built a dud, which I think who would have thought when he drew up the big plan with crayons that maybe the bomb might not fail to fail to take both guys out. So uh, I thought that uh, the the for the battle it really delivered uh, excellent action. Both guys came out okay, which is great because on paper it looked like the kind of match where somebody could get hurt. So there's part of his explanation. Wow, wait a minute. First of all, oh, you know, they're fine. They're okay. Yeah, Moxley, he just got beaten with a baseball bat and handcuffed and pummeled by our world champion and two large accomplices and was beaten with everything. And stuff. he's fine. And blaming the heel for making a bad gimmick. You know what, Tony Khan? The heel used to be able to take heat like that. When the heel would say something on television and the promoter would get in trouble, he'd say, oh, it's that daggum heel, we can't control him. Or when the heel would cheat and win a match, the promoters trying to be baby faces would go, well, it's the heel's fault. And when people believed wrestling, that worked. But now that you and the rest of your ilk, I don't care whether you've got $1 or a $1 billion, you're nerds living out your fantasies while you're playing pocket pool in your mom's basement, booking your live action action figures that your daddy bought you it don't work that way anymore because all of you insipid little twerps have told people over and over that wrestling is all fake and funny and bullshit so now you've got to own up to your fucking mistakes instead of blaming it on the heel because that don't work anymore because you fucked it up and I wonder if all the Rick Moranis comparisons are the reason why all of a sudden he's drastically changed his appearance. But another quote from Tony. He's probably not able to, to get to the high quality Adderall anymore. And he's, 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 he's doing the cheap shit. But at the end, I don't know what people really wanted. Unless you wanted us to actually explode the guys at the end. There's only so much you yes. can do. So without actually blowing the ring and blowing both guys up, I think the basic <laughs> explanation is. Kenny's ring was set to explode, and his plan as a heel who built this thing with a hammer and nails, as we saw, the final uh, bomb just didn't go off. Nobody believes he built it, because for one thing, when they saw him with the hammer in his hand, everybody realized he'd never done a day's work in his life. Nobody believes he built it. 
And yes, what did we expect? We expected what you told us was going to happen. The ring was going to blow up. This fucking idiot Moxley, this balding sack of shit from Cincinnati, with a fucking emaciated frame and the idea in his warped mind that he's somehow some big badass that people should be afraid of because he snaps necks and breaks legs, even though he never does any of that, and Harpo finger fuck that made his biggest name in Japan sticking his finger up other men's asses in wrestling matches and having contests with sex dolls. We, you imagine the, twi- the two of them together can't come up with a winner of a goddamn gimmick match? No, you said you were going to blow these fucking people up if they weren't out of the ring. Do we expect you to blow the ring up and the people up? No. That's why we expect you not to have the stupid fucking match where you have to promise people that you're going to blow up the ring and the wrestlers in it. It was a stupid idea that wasn't going to work. I predicted it. Everybody else that knows what they're talking about did too. It didn't work, and you all should be ashamed of yourself. Instead of coming out and apologizing and just saying we're too stupid to do this, and we have these wacko outlaw garbage deathmatch ideas from these idiot outlaw mud show wrestlers I've signed, and I apologize for all of them, and we're going to start having matches as soon as I can sign some wrestlers. Instead, he blames the fucking heel for coming up with a bad gimmick that his promotion advertised for weeks as something that it was not. Bait and switch, false advertising, bullshit, the inability to follow through with something, and it's the only possible way to paint this in a good light is if they thought after the fact that they'd announced this, this is the stupidest thing we've ever done and we shouldn't do this, they should have pulled the whole goddamn match, but instead they go through and half-ass it and don't deliver what the people were told they were going to get when they bought the thing. Fuck you. Could have just owned it. When ECW tried to do this in like 93, I think it was like either October or November of 93, and it was a dud, they owned it. They apologized. They said it was a stupid thing. They won't do it again. He could have just come out and said, yeah, you know, we we had the best intentions at hand, but it didn't work out. We're never going to do that to our fans ever again. Those early Ring of Honor pay-per-views, internet pay-per-views that went off the air. I came out and apologized and the peop- and sincerely and explained we were trying to grow and the people bought it. And then Sinclair stopped me from going out and apologized. They said, don't apologize. Concentrate on the good part. The good part of what? The show was off the fucking air. Well, what do they expect for $9 a month? Fuck you, office boy, Greg. And then when I couldn't go out and apologize anymore and they kept fucking up, Part of the reason they didn't want me to apologize was because they kept fucking up. And it would have got old. Because they wouldn't stop fucking up. The same situation here, only they're not on Go Fight Live. They're in, on Mount Adderall with their fucking ADD-ridden booker. Allegedly. fucking up. Allegedly. And let me just, you mentioned it earlier. So Wait a minute, allegedly Adderall or allegedly ADD? I think we can prove the ADD. He's well, all over the fucking place. We don't know what medication for sure. But you brought up earlier the clip that's gone around. Again, thankfully these fans are starting to film stuff in Daly's place. So we could see Shaq running away from the ambulance with Jade. And we could see the post-match celebration, as it were. So Moxley gets on the mic while Eddie Kingston's being attended to by whoever because he's dead from the yeah, explosion that never right, happened. Yeah. How, the, how the fuck Moxley had been beaten with baseball bats and all this stuff and gone through this whole match and bled and got blown up. Kingston ran in fresh as a daisy and got blown up and nothing touched him. And he's dead and Moxley's back up on the microphone. Maybe Go they'll ahead. say like Eddie's like an old woman. Like he... You know, or he's like, you know, uh, Fred Sanford, like, oh, my heart, my heart. And he I'm, just, he was so I'm nervous about it, he had a heart attack. I'm coming, Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm coming to the big ring in the sky. So here's the quote, the exact quote from Moxley after the show. Kenny Omega may be a tough son of a bitch, but he can't even make an exploding ring worth a shit. I've seen more dangerous shit on ridiculousness on MTV what the fuck was that? 
They named their show Dynamite, and they had no dynamite. They had no dynamite. <laughs> if brains were dynamite, they couldn't blow their nose. Well, all right. You know, Jim, a lot of people at home, and this happens sometimes. They may want compensation for this. I was going to say, I remember in the old days of a pay-per-view would cut off early. All of a sudden, you start hearing, I want my money back. You yes. start hearing that from lots of people. Bob Myrowitz. Had a big problem with the UFC where it cut off early one time. Yep, and he had to yep. refund a lot of money. But with this AEW pay-per-view, we were promised an explosion and we got a popcorn fart. If only there was a way, maybe you know a way, that some of the viewers at home can get some compensation. I can tell you a, a, a fine way. Because, folks, it would have been even better if this pay-per-view had gone off the air without showing the ending. But instead it did. And we were baited and switched. And our money was taken away under false pretenses. And for that or any other type of legal situation, there's only one place to turn. Call Stephen P. To the rest. Yes, folks, if you have a legal situation, if you've been harmed and you need compensation, then you will applaud the services of Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. You will applaud the great Stephen P. New because he will tell whoever has wronged you to kiss his legal ass. And then... He will extract from their pocket numerous pictures of dead presidents and hand them over to you, and you will go happy into that good night while your opposition cries like babies because Stephen P. New will have triumphed over injustice and unfairness to deliver to you the proper compensation that you deserve for being wronged and, uh, and trifled with by these major corporations that want to bait and switch you for some reason or other. NewLawOffice.com, 888-692-8084. Get even. Call Stephen. For heaven's sake, call somebody. Get on the telephone and call somebody about this, this fraud that was perpetrated on us all. Stephen P. New, NewLawOffice.com, 888-692-8084. Kiss your worries goodbye.